Venn diagrams. By now, you should have a gist of the main set theory concepts, but if not, um, don't worry too much. You could just head back to the fundamentals and give it another go. In this lesson, though, we'll be more focused on just solving some problems. And here's your checklist. Um, this time, I just want you to try to enjoy your practice. This video is really just meant to expose you to some of the questions that you can expect in the set theory portion of your exam. And into the math gym we go. Question one, and we are given a Venn diagram here with two sets A and B. And the question asks us to list the elements of the following. So we have part one and it asks for A intercept B. So we look over to our Venn diagram and we are looking for where A and B are overlapping. So when we look in the overlap, we see that there is just number five. So A intercept B is just the set containing the number five. Now for part two, we're looking for A union B. So we want all of the numbers that are in A or B and we want to list them only one time. So we have two, six, one from A and five from the overlap and then three and eight from B. Question two. Um, part one is the same idea as before. We want A intercept B. So we are looking for where A and B overlap each other. But we see that A and B actually do not intercept this time. So A intercept B is the empty set. And we say this because there is no overlapping. And now we move on to part two, A union B. We want to list each number in A or B only one time. So we say 5, 14, 3. And then we move on to 9, 1, 12, 2, and 3. Question 3. So now you can see that we have sort of a subset situation. And I'd encourage you to pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so let's, um, let's go through it together. So part one asks us to list the elements of question of A. So we have one and six. These are the numbers that are also in B. And then we have five, nine, and two. And then part two asks us to just list the parts in B and B is a smaller circle. So we want one and six. And part three asks us to do A intercept B. So we're looking for where in the diagram is an overlapping occurring. And if you look at it, the entirety of B is overlapping A. So we want one and six again. And now part four is asking for A union B. And we want to list all of the elements of A or B one time. And so we have one, six, five, nine, and two, just as we did before with A. Question four. Well, one thing that we could say about this question just by looking at it is that it got enough words. But I do believe that this is a good thing. Um, a big part of math, especially doing math questions, is getting over the stress and the anxiety that you feel whenever you see a bunch of words. So how I like to approach something like this is that I would block out the um, unimportant parts and just focus on one sentence at a time. That way you could get a better understanding of what is going on without all of the stress and the worry and everything. So let us see how that works. Um, okay, first sentence. 30 people at a family luncheon sit down to eat. Okay, so straight away, you can say that the total number of people is 30. Let's move on to the second sentence. It says, from the looks of it, all of the food tastes good, but the most important thing seems to be the rice and the pie. And, well, that is great news, but it doesn't actually have any mathematical information, so we could just throw away the whole sentence. Okay? So, sentence number three. 15 people eat rice, and 20 people eat pie. Okay? So this, this is good information. So we write down that there are 15... Um, people who eat rice or 15 rice people and there are 20 people who eat pie or 25 people 
we should actually be, be saying um the number of like the number of rich people and the number of poor people but um that is okay and let's move on to the last sentence the sentence is actually the most important one because it contains the question well the actual question it tells you what you should be looking to solve and it reads if only 10 people eat both then how many people did not eat rice or pie so let's first record the last bit of information and that is there are 10 people that eat both rice and pie or 10 rice and pie people and then the question is how many people did not eat rice or pie okay so let us get rid of all of the extra and now this is what we want to deal with so you want to draw a Venn diagram of this information so that you could actually see what is going on in the question so we'll go ahead and do that now and P is for pie people and R is for rice people and we are going to put in the number of people of each set as opposed to listing out the individual elements like we did in the earlier questions so we know that the number of rice and pie people is 10 but there were 15 rice people so that means that the number of people who ate rice only is 5 and similarly there were 20 pie people but 10 people ate both rice and pie so that means that the number of people who ate pie only is 10 okay so the question asks us to figure out how many people ate neither pie or rice so that means that we are looking for the people who would sit outside of P and R, but still inside of U. So we know that there were 30 people in all. So all we need to do is take 30 and subtract it from N of P union R would be 10 plus 10 plus 5. And we subtract that from 30. And we see that 30 minus 25 is, 20, is 5. Question five, and this is without a shadow of a doubt, the most difficult question that we will be doing today. So if you haven't taken a break as yet, um, I would suggest that you go for a walk or jump up and down or anything that you do to just reset your mind and let us sit in and take in this one. So the thing about this question that makes it difficult is that it includes algebra and the use of Venn diagrams, and it may be the first time that you might be seeing something like this. So um, sit, sit tight. The question reads, in a class of 34, the students must do English, math, or both. And it asks, how many students do both English and math? So there's just one more piece of information that we need to fully interpret the question, and that is this Venn diagram here. So this Venn diagram is showing the number of students in each set. So now that we have this information, where do we even start? Well, we have to start by relating the question to set theory. So the first sentence tells us that in a class of 34, students must do English math or both. So we know from the or that we are thinking union. And because they must do either or of these things, then we know that the entirety of the set or the whole class is doing English and math, so the number of students in the union is 34. And the question now is asking us about um, how many students are doing both English and math. So because of the and, you know that the question is asking you to look to the intersection. Now we have the number of students in the union, and we want to find the number of students in the intersection. So the main, main part of this, of this question the most difficult concept in this question is how do we relate the union or the number of students in the union to the number of students in the intersection? And the answer to that question is that we use this formula here, which is the one that we talked about in the note on double counting. Once you have this concept, then the rest of the question is just a matter of replacing the values from the question and the Venn diagrams and solving. Right, let's see this in action. So we know that the number of students in the union is 34 because that is what the first sentence told us. 
And then from the Venn diagram, we know that the number of students in English is 2x plus x, and the number of students in math is x plus 6 plus x. And then all we need to do is subtract the intersection, which is x. Notice that the intersection is x, so we need to solve this equation for x, and then we will have our answer. So the next thing we need to do is simplify. So we simplify 2x plus x, this is 3x, and then x plus 6 plus x is 2x plus 6, and then we just rewrite our minus x. And now we simplify further by taking over the 6 to the other side. And now we just have 28 equals 3x plus 2x minus x, which is 28 equals 4x. And this gives us x equals 7. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe here if you want to get the latest from the Caribbean Scholar YouTube channel, or if you're ready, you can use the link in the description to hop onto our website and sign up for one of our premium courses.